This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 174 of the Stable Scoop Radio Show, a field trip to Draper Therapies. Please support our sponsors as they make this show possible. Equestrian Collections offers the whole universe of shopping at your fingertips at a price you can afford, especially this holiday season. Shop online at equestriancollections.com. Plus Kentucky Performance Products at kppusa.com. Welcome to the Stable School. With weekly shows delivered right to you. With Helena and Glenn the Geek, live from the stable, it's every week. We bring you the news through hay or hot water while using their tails as their own fly swatters. So sit on down and laugh till your poop, cause it's time again for Stable School. Stable Scoop. Stable Scoop. Stable Scoop. I am Glenn Geek. And this is Helena B. And you're listening to the Stable Scoop Radio Show on the Horse Radio Network. Well, howdy, Helena. Oh, hi. <laughs> You've been traveling and doing things, and uh, uh, we recorded a show together last night. It's been a busy week. It's been a very busy week, and it's been a very busy day. I have three horses now that I'm responsible for, and today was Farrier Day. Uh. So I was running all over the state of Rhode Island to have my horse's feet trimmed and shod and all kinds of interesting stuff. And and everything was successful? Everything was successful, yes. Pi has been wearing his feet down now that he's back in work, so we... Mm. I'm crossing my fingers that we won't have to put shoes on him because he has wonderful feet. Oh, so you so, don't even have uh, you don't even have front shoes on him? No, okay. he's barefoot and he's uh. he's happy. So we're keeping our fingers crossed that we can keep him that way. He is doing very well up at the Carnegie Abbey Equestrian Center in Portsmouth. Is it really like an abbey? No, it was okay. at one point. There was, was the it? Portsmouth Abbey. Portsmouth Abbey was is still there at the golf course, the school. Yes, that so was, was an abbey. Part of the Catholic Church at that point, I guess. That kind of I don't abbey? know much about it. I don't know. Oh, okay, you just yeah, don't probably. always hear that name in, in relation to a farm, you know. <laughs> no, it's it it has the, the the whole area has a much greater history than the the farm. The no. farm came later. Okay. Cool. So, cool. yeah. So anyway, so he's up there. And then we got the new guy. I had new front shoes put on the new guy and studs because winter's here. <laughs> studs. Oh, studs. <laughs> I, you know, and I, I have that big, you know, he's a quarter horse. So I had that big question about, you know, his tiny feet and his big body. I, I just, just the only thing I don't like about quarter horses. And they're not all that way, but certain ones bred for certain things, obviously, were bred that way. And from what I hear, they're starting to get away from that a little bit again. Uh, yeah. Thank, thank goodness. But uh, yours, yours was, how old is he? He's five. Yeah, see, they're only just starting to get away from that now. So Yeah, it's going to take a couple of generations before yeah. they can breed that out of them. But let's hope they continue that because it was really a silly thing. So. Oh, my goodness. It's just, you know. And there's a, it is. You know, it's a shame. Yeah, there's a lot of silly things that we do for competition in this horse world. Uh, but hopefully some of that will change and over a period of time. They, uh, Western Radio Show just did a show on that, actually, about the pleasure classes and how, how things – they're not making – they don't want them as fat anymore and, and uh, improving the size of the feet. So let's hope yeah. that continues. Well, today we're yeah. talking about – you're my guest today because something a little different. So that means I can ask you anything I want. Yes, you can, because I spent <laughs> over four hours at the Draper Therapies Mill in Canton, Massachusetts yesterday, and I know plenty about Draper. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, she, the g- girl there, Kat's very sweet girl, and I met her at the World Equestrian Games, and they had a booth set up at the World Equestrian Games, and they... Um, about the third day in, my feet were killing me. The, the World of Question Games this time at the Kentucky Horse Park 
was just a ton of walking from getting from the parking lots to all around to 1200 acres of the horse park and we were covering everything for for the for the radio show Mm -hmm. so my feet were killing me by the third day and i stopped by draper therapies and i said she and i told her that and she said oh we have the solution for you and she gave me a couple pairs of her socks she was kind enough just to don't i was i must have looked absolutely pitiful and (laughs) She donated these socks to me, and I wore them the next day. And within a day, my feet were like back back to normal. I mean, just absolutely wonderful. Yeah. And I, it, the blisters went. It just they, I don't know what they do because she tried to explain it to me, and I still didn't know what they did. But it was just wonderful. I just loved them, and I wore them every day. I'd wash them every other day. She gave me two pairs. So for 16 days, I was washing socks to make sure I had those socks on every day. <laughs> and they really worked. And since then, she sent me some more socks. So thank you, Kat. But I'm interested to talk to you, too. Really, what we're going to be talking about is this is one of the very few products still made in the United States. And we really want to – you learned a lot about why products aren't and why products are. So Yeah, uh, and, and – um... It is. It's just very interesting to see what goes on behind the scenes in making some of the stuff that we buy. I mean, you know, we horse people, we are we're addicted to buying stuff. And some of the things that we I mean, these are really important products that we buy for our horses, the things that touch their body, that go on their bodies every single day. And um, I think it's really important for our listeners to have just a little bit of an understanding about what it takes to bring these products, you know, from conception to you, the consumer. Um, and I got quite the education yesterday. Well, good. And, uh, well, we're, let's, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold that okay. thought. We'll get to we'll get to that in a minute, but we have to do some business here first. Ah, business. Uh, well, business. There's, there's one thing I wanted to bring up, and and you know that uh, we are big supporters of NetPosse.com. NetPosse yes. is the website that helps people who have their had their horses stolen or missing. Uh, helps them find them, and they've had two. And you know, we bring them on the morning show all the time to talk about missing horses and we get the owners on and you know we we try and support them in every way we can they have had two success stories recently a pony in arizona that was found thanks to neck posse and somebody saw the uh facebook posting that got spread like wildfire all through arizona and uh they actually recovered the pony for the people and then they had another one that was missing for six days that thanks to that posse, they recovered. So they've had a couple of success stories here recently, thank God. Uh, but one of the things they sent out here I wanted to share with everybody, and it's something we don't think about. You know, we talk about our horses and identifying our horses through tattoos and through microchipping and things like that. We've talked a lot about that, but one of the things that gets stolen all the time And I see these, you know, we follow every news story that has a horse in it in in the world. And I see it every day, and that is tack getting stolen. And they came out with some ideas on how you can prevent thieves from getting to your tack or, you know, how you can help identify it after and help the police out. So would you mind if I shared a couple of those things? I thought coming into the holiday season, people are going to be getting new saddles, new tack, and we really need to start thinking about these things because it's becoming a problem. Um, so, uh, I would love to hear this. The first one is, is they say, do not store stuff in your, your mobile tack trunks, the tack trunks you take to shows and fill up with all the stuff. A lot of people keep tack trunks at the, at the facility. And what they're saying is instead of having a mobile tack trunk at your facility, you need to have something that's nailed to the wall. And has a lock on it. So a lot of barns now are putting in tack spaces, big boxes basically, that are either nailed down to the floor or to the wall or whatever, screwed down, and they have sturdy locks on them. And they say it's harder for them to get all of your stuff in their hands and carry it out than it is to just pick up your tack trunk and leave with everything. So... I can see the point there. So they they say, you know, when you come back from the show, you should be unpacking it into some kind of secure tack thing. And that's hard if you board. If you have your own place like you do, that's easier to do. Um, Right. But when you board, it is harder to do. But that's one of the things they recommend. Two, and I never, ever thought about this, and I'm wondering if you ever thought about it, Helena, is microchip your saddle. 
And oh, yeah, I've never thought about that. And you can go great to, idea. Yeah, you can go to netposse.com and they will actually get you the microchip equipment and the you, so that it can be followed and traced and all that. And all you have to do is bring it to any tack shop that has a saddler, and they unstitch a couple of the stitches somewhere in the saddle. They put the microchip in, and then they stitch it back up. Isn't that a great idea? I love it. <laughs> I would have never I love thought it. about that. It's um, so tiny. I want to microchip me. <laughs> well, that's lost. coming someday here soon. My kids, leave. I know. <laughs> You'll be, they'll be reading that, too, at the airport. Um, Use an engraver to, to uh, and mark your tack. And what they're, you know, one of those little engravers. Uh, mm-hmm. it, and what is, she is talking about is don't forget your bits, your spurs, and your other items. Because in most of those things, like your spurs, you can engrave the bottom with your name and phone number. The uh, bits you can engrave somewhere on it, doesn't really matter. Uh, spurs, you can usually engrave the inside. So what she's saying is anything that's metal can be engraved. And it's worth just making sure just that Every barn should have an engraver so that everybody can do that. What a great idea. Because even if you're boarding at a barn, isn't it your bits and your stirrups and your 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 spurs that always end up missing? Well, you know, I spent 80 bucks on a really nice miler bit, and it just walked away. That's right. And, you know, well, if you may never find it, but at least if, you, if it's somebody from your barn that just, you know, accidentally picked it up, uh, it has your name in it. So... And if it's engraved under the thing, it's harder for them to erase it. Uh, so I love that idea, too. Uh, take photographs of everything you own and store it on a little uh, uh, memory stick and put the memory stick somewhere safe because those photographs then you can use with the police, number one, and then with your insurance company because they're going to want that. They're going to oh, want right. pictures of everything you own. And what they recommend is you just lay it all out and take pictures of it. And if it takes many pictures, that's fine. But get a picture of everything. Insurance companies like pictures. They like to know what shape things were in. And and that will help you in filing your claim much, much quicker if somebody comes in and just wipes your place out. So... That's a good good suggestion, too. This was a lot of great suggestions, actually. Uh, I, keep, I'm writing these down. <laughs> I know. Well, we can post this. Uh, we'll post this on our Facebook page, too. Um, keep records of bills of sale. We, as a group, and I say we, meaning horse people as a group, are terrible at record keeping. It's something that we're not good at. And I'm saying that as a blanket statement, and I think I'm pretty right. Um, so well, it is imperative that you keep your bills of sale, especially for the larger items, your, your blankets, your saddles, your expensive helmets, your expensive riding clothes, keep your bills of sale, keep it all in a safe place. And because if your stuff is stolen, you need to prove the value. And that, and what they're saying is with the pictures and the bills of sale, your, your claim will go through 10 times faster with the insurance company, and you're also going to have everything that the police are going to need to make out the report. Um, and then the other thing they say is keep Net Posse's phone number handy. Uh, they will do what they can to help you at a time uh, when, when something like this happens. They are experts at saying, okay, very calmly because you're hysterical, they're very calm in saying, okay, you need to do these things. This is what you do in what order. And they actually mm-hmm. guide you through that step by step. So um, these are some great suggestions. You might have some to add to it that you could post on our Facebook page as well. But, but I love these suggestions from Net Posse, and I just thought I would share them with you today so that we can all be safe this holiday season. Because keep in mind that the holiday season is the greatest time burglaries and thefts double and triple during the holidays. Um, Ugh, really? Oh, yeah. Let me tell you a quick story, mm-hmm. if you don't mind. Um, I used to work, one of my first jobs was as a clerk at a hotel. And, of course, I had night shift, 11 at night to 7 in the morning, and I was the only one in the desk area at that time. Now, this was a hotel that had 100 and some rooms, and it was in a fairly rural area of Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. So we used to lock the area that the the front desk was in, and I would just open it for guests coming in. So I would uh, – it was a Christmas Eve – about 3 in the morning. Now, Christmas Eve, the place was dead. You know, at 3 in the morning, everybody's asleep at Christmas Eve, mm. except for criminals. 
And I saw some <laughs> su- suspicious activity at the gas station across the street, which was closed at the time. Now, this is 25 years ago. And I thought, oh, that's kind of weird. But it didn't, you know, I couldn't see well enough, and I didn't really know what was going on, so I kind of ignored it. Well, then I saw a car pull up to the front of our door, and, and, and then, you know, I sort of walked around to the front like I usually do. I was going to unlock it if somebody wanted to come in. And then they, they took off before they even saw me. They went around the back of the building, and we had a back entrance into a storage room. And I was, I could hear, you know, if that door would ever open from, from the front desk. Well, I heard glass breaking back there. Ooh. And I went and opened the door, and there they were. Break, there were uh, four or five of them breaking into the back door of the hotel. Now, this is Christmas Eve, keep in mind. So uh, I locked the door that they would have to come through to get to the main area. And they saw me, and I think that spooked them off anyway. But I, so I locked that door and called the police. And they, their response was, it's Christmas Eve, and we, it's going to be two hours before we can get there. So because they they're so busy. Cause, well, no, there's one cop on duty for an entire. Oh, county, right. Okay. You Sorry. know, it's state police in that area. So yeah. it's like they, you're just going to have to do the best you can. <laughs> Great. So, <laughs> so basically, uh, I, I, you know, our fail safe if something happened was that we were supposed to, if you know, we thought we were in danger, is get a room key and go to one of the rooms, and just go hide basically and let them take whatever. So uh, that way, so I got a room key out, was ready, but they they took off and ne- didn't come back. Well, the police did show up the next morning, so it was about seven o'clock on Christmas Day. The policemen showed up and said five places along that road were were uh, burglared that that night. They broke mm-hmm. in and stole stuff from five businesses along that, and I was lucky. So, yes, uh, Christmas is a, is the worst time for this kind of stuff. Oh, gosh, people. I know. Well, people also, the criminals also know, you have a house full of good stuff that hasn't been used yet. Yeah, that's true. Electronics and things are all in their packages. They can pawn that stuff easier than a used one, you know? So uh, so that's just that time of year. Keep it in mind. I'm not here to depress everybody. I'm just here to say, you know, there are certain things we can do to be vigilant and be uh, Too late. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Too late. But what I will say is get your horses done first. Microchip yeah. those horses. That's, microchip those. That's, and your tack. That's easy. Yeah, that's the biggest thing you can do. Where do you get a microchip from? Uh, netposse.com will help you do it. Oh, they that. have it for you. Yep, just go to okay. netposse.com, and they're going to help you get take care of that. They have the registry and, and everything that uh, goes along with it. So a lot of good information on that website. And they're not a sponsor of ours. They're just a nonprofit that does great work. So, uh kudos out to them and and uh and and i hope that helps everybody well you're talking about draper products and we're talking about made in the usa well a a company that's here in the usa is equestrian collections and they carry all of the draper products so as uh helene is talking about american made and the draper products you're going to hear you're going to be able to find them all at equestriancollections.com and helena i have a little surprise for you if you will go to equestriancollections.com Oh, geez, that's tough for me. Hold on. Let me get my bookmark out. (laughs) Okay, go ahead. Just go to that. I'm there already. All right, look at the middle of the page. Oh, my God. Tell everybody what's on the middle of the page. Stable Scoop episode 170, Equestrian Collections 2011, Holiday Gift Guide. Right there, smack dab in the middle. Nice banner. I love the graphics. Huge banner. <laughs> That's pretty fabulous. So our the show we did with them a couple weeks ago is right there, front and center on their website. Isn't that cool? We know it's hard to believe. Tune in and fill out that holiday gift list today. Great job, Equestrian Collections. We love it. <laughs> I thought you'd like that. That was a really good episode. I like the products that we talked about that we picked, too. Those are always fun ones. They only come around once a year, but they're fun. Well, I think everybody knows we love to talk about stuff anyway. We do like to talk about stuff. But you know what? Having, like, their buyer on gives you, again, it's that backstory on why. Like, you know, most of us consumers, all we see is the front, like, we that, that how the product is presented. But to understand why it was selected and what it really does, like, this stuff serves a purpose, you know? Right, right. All right, granted, you know, the red jacket looks cute, but it does have 
a function to it. Well, and, and I, I th think what people are most confused about most of the time when it comes to stuff, and I'm sure we're going to get into that here shortly, is why is one better than another? When you're going to buy anything and you have to comparison shop, it's why is one better than the other? That's the most confusing thing for people who know nothing about that product. Right. Yeah, so... All right. Well, you took a road trip here. And oh, by the way, I'll just tease this. At the end of the show, I have the cutest uh, sound off a of video of two little girls about Gracie's age. Wouldn't you say they were about Gracie's age? I think eight or nine yeah. years old. Yeah. 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 Who did their own version of 12 Days of Christmas. To, and they changed the words to their horses stuff. <laughs> so it's so cute. And we're just going to play the show out with it today. So stay tuned to the very end of the show because we have that special little treat for you today. They did a great job. And, and I, I don't know how I stumbled across it, but uh, we're just going to play it out today. Uh, so tell us about your trip and, and why you made it and, and uh, what the story is. Okay. So, um, you know, the horse world is a small world. And, uh, you and I have been, we've, this isn't our first uh, <laughs> rodeo with Draper Therapies. We've, we've met the team at uh, the American Equestrian Trade Association before, uh, horse shows through, you know, the retail business. Through socks. Through socks. You're, you're, uh, yeah. So um, I, uh, I was introduced to, to Kat, Kat Voy Talak. She has one of those very one of those very interesting last I names. I never that, say her last name because <laughs> <laughs> it looks nothing like the way it's pronounced. So it's Kat Voitalak, Voitalak, and she actually was a wonderful host. She had me come up to the Draper Mill in Canton, Massachusetts, um, yesterday actually, and I spent about four hours there taking a tour of the mill. Now, uh, Draper Therapies is a relatively new company. And they make therapeutic horse products like blankets and wraps and saddle pads. And um, they're, I, you know, I, nobody really likes to be compared to another company. But, you know, if you think of back on track, Draper Therapies is not unlike them. You have to, you know, they're in the same bucket. So, uh, but completely different technologies. So that's Draper Therapies. But really where it started was a company called Draper Knitting, which like, what the heck is that? And Draper Knitting, it's, they're the ones that own this mill. And at the mill, they make fabrics. They make fabrics to sell wholesale to companies who then make things with those fabrics. Okay, So like Patagonia, L.L. Bean, they will buy fabrics from Draper to make their clothing out of. And okay, you said that uh, Draper Knitting is 150 years old? It's – yes. And, um, we, we, and it's – I, hold, hold that one thought. I just wanted to say, yeah. too, and for people who aren't from New England or haven't been there much, New England, you know, 100, 150 years ago, even back to 60 years ago, was filled. Every town had 12 mills. And making fabric and, and working on fabric was the thing that, they did, that you did in New England. Yep. Uh, it was a mill. Every Connecticut was a mill state. Uh, Rhode Island and Massachusetts were all mill states. The, and they're, the remnants of these mills are everywhere. Um, just north of me in Fall River was one of the, the, was like the hub of cotton processing. So it was grown in the south and then it was shipped up to Fall River where it was processed. And that was like the biggest cotton processing hub in the world. And it, like you said, everywhere, the mills, I mean, these days, their mills are being turned into condos and shopping centers. But what I found absolutely fascinating was that this mill is pretty much intact, just the way it has been for the last 150 years. Obviously, there have been some innovations, technology innovations along the way, but it's very, it's very much old school. Brick? Brick. Yeah. Uh, the floors are wood. The uh, machines are made out of steel. Yeah. Cast the, iron in some cases. <laughs> yeah. And I, I got to see the big vats where the fabric is dyed. Um, and what I got to see was – now, Kat was wonderful. She she first gave me the history of Draper Knitting, which is the part of the company that or the parent company that makes the fabric. They make it there at these – at their mill. Draper Therapies is new. And the story behind it is so cool. It's not like they started out to make this like holistic healing horse prop, you know, horse products. Um, one of the things that Draper Knitting does is they will test fabrics 
for other companies. So let's say I'm a company that has this new technology that, uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm inventing some kind of glitter and I want to see how it, how it will manufacture into fabric. So I'll call up Draper Knitting and I'll say, hey, I've got this glitter. Can you help me incorporate it into your fabric? And then I want to test it out as, I don't know, pants. So that's one of the things that Draper Knitting does as part of their business. So uh, a couple of years ago, I think it was like eight years ago, this company was working on this technology to, um, well, it's now called Cilient, and they wanted to make socks for diabetics. And the technology, they said, can, we, can you put our technology into your fabric, embed it right into the, knit it right into the fabric, and then make us some socks, and we want to test it. And so Draper had all these remnants. They had these pieces of this fabric that they had knitted with this technology embedded into it lying around. And there was a woman who was working for them, and she happened to get hurt. And the president of the company said, oh, here, take this, you know, take this swatch of fabric and go wrap it around your arm and see if you feel better. And I don't know. It's kind of voodoo, whatever. Ha, ha, ha. You know. Well. The woman came back the next day and she couldn't believe how much better her arm felt. And so she thought it was a fluke. She kept trying it. And every night she had this fabric wrapped around her arm, she felt better and better and better. She said, listen, I know this is kind of crazy, but give me a couple of more swatches. I want to try it on my horse. Cut me a bigger swatch. I want to put, you know, make a blanket for him. And the benefits of this fabric were so, uh, granted, they're anecdotal, they're clinical, but she believed in it so much that they decided to start to incorporate this technology into real fabrics and really start trying them out on animals and people. Huh. And together with the company who created the technology, they said, you know what? This is a match made in heaven. This stuff is really working. So the company who made the technology gave Draper Knitting the rights to – create the fabric and sell it to the equine industry. And that's how Draper Therapies was born. Huh, interesting. Now, the um, Hologenic, the company that makes the technology that goes into the fabric, they are on their own and they actually make these fabrics for the healthcare industry. So, you know, what they originally intended this material to do, it is doing to this day. And they have paid for and sponsored uh all the right clinical studies. And I even checked this with Peter. I asked, her, okay, these are their studies. These are the universities that are doing the studies. They're double blinds. They have the right controls. This is, is this all legitimate? And yeah, that, so they've got the science behind the fabrics. Well, and, and of course, Peter is uh, Helena's husband for the new listeners who uh, works at a university and does those kind of things on the nutrition side. He does nutrition and, and fitness, so he's um, he does a lot of statistical analysis of data. So there's no one really who knows what it means to do research more than he does. It's his yeah. life. Great. So now, so, so, so let yeah. me ask you some questions. There are Go very ahead. few products still made in the horse world in the United States. Um, right. Why are they still making it in the United States? Well, because it's a family-run company, basically um, – they have – they make things in small amounts. They're not like these big companies like the Weatherbeaters of the world and, um, you know, a lot of companies outsource overseas. They send their stuff to China, to Taiwan, um, to a lot of the Far East and Middle East countries for manufacturing because it's cheaper. But because it's a family-run company, it's small. They never wanted to give up the quality in what they made. So – they're, they outsource nothing. It's all made right there in their mill. If they have, if they're contracted to, to make some kind of product that requires, let's say, binding or a ribbon or something that they don't actually knit or manufacture at the mill, they will use another American company for that component of yeah, the product. Yeah. And you can control your costs a lot better. So you can create better quality and control your costs. The key is, though, how do you deliver goods to your customers, you know, like the L.L. Beans of the world, the Patagonias of the world? How do you deliver goods to those customers in small amounts? You know, these guys need – they're selling amazing amounts of product. 
but you have a small company like Draper says like, you know, listen, I can't, I can't make you 10,000 units a month. Yeah, I can't <laughs> you supply know? Walmart. Yeah. Right. Right. So that's really the, the key is saying, if you want to buy something from us, we're going to sell you something that's really good quality and it's going to last. And we're going to sell you 400 of them. But if you want to sell something in this price point and you want to sell 10,000 of them, you know, we're not the company for you. Gotcha. Right. And I mean, I got to see these machines work and I got to see how a fabric gets the quality, the durability. I said to Kat, okay, so what makes Draper products stand out from the rest of the world? And she said, just basically, we are a, an American made quality product. We have this technology in it. The technology works. That's number one. Number two is it's made right here. It's made to withstand the test of time. So now, um, how many people do they employ there? Is it all automated or is it? Uh... Nope, it's not automated. Um, that's a good question. Exactly how many people from what I saw? I, I mean, you know, maybe 50 or under. Yeah, OK. All right. Not a lot. Not a lot. Um, there's somebody like and there, there are these machines. So the machines are old. There's no high tech stuff. Um, gosh, I mean, I actually saw wool fiber being turned into yarn, and then the next machine turns it into knits it into the fabric. So I got to see it go from its raw material to an actual blanket. I walked through the facility and saw each machine as it was processing the fiber, the wool fiber, into the final product. It, it's crazy, Glenn. Like, you don't realize that the, there's a lot that goes into making these blankets and these saddle pads and these polo wraps hmm. just they, in the manufacturing the fabric alone. And they have a human line too, don't they? They do. They do T-shirts and um, socks, so- which you I said. I know about the socks, yeah. yeah. Yep. And, and I have knee braces, right? Kat gave me a knee brace, and okay. um, I've been wearing it for the last 48 hours and <laughs> it's the first thing that's made my knee feel better in like the last six weeks. I'm telling you, for some reason, the stuff works. And I don't exactly understand how it works or why it works. Um, but, you know, if I'm one of those guys that if it works, I don't need to question the science. It's true. Yeah. The science is pretty cool. Um, there are some therapies people say, oh, magnetic therapy or ceramic, which actually, you know, use heat. Well, one of the things that I learned um, after having my ACL done is that heat isn't always a friend. In fact, a lot of cold therapy is good for healing tissues. But one of the things that's really important is how much oxygen is in your blood. And your your blood is the messenger of or the carrier of a lot of the healing properties that your own body has. And so what this technology does is it helps regulate the temperature, um, your body temperature and improve the oxygenation in your blood. So more O2 in your blood means more healing power. Which is why it's used for diabetes, because one of the biggest problems they have is the blood supply to the feet and ended up losing their feet and toes. Exactly. So that's how this whole thing came about. And so what happens is if you are well and you're healthy and you have a Draper product on your body, it's going to optimize that health. If you are not well, if you're sore or something is going through a healing process, it's going to speed up that healing process and make it more efficient. Well, it's interesting. I read an article or a story yesterday that more and more manufacturing is coming back to the United States. And the reason for that is, is it's becoming actually more economical in many cases to do it here than in China. Because in China, they have had to increase pay by almost 30% to a lot of their workers. So yep. all of a sudden, it isn't as cheap as it used to be in China. And, you know, that's the problem when you take a third world country and bring it into the first world is all of a sudden now, the, you know, people expect to get paid more and have to get paid more. Mm-hmm. So it, it changes the scope of things for them now. That's why you see a lot of when, it, when it's being shipped out, now it's going to Mexico instead of China. Is, is for that reason, is they haven't caught up to that curve yet. But a lot of companies are just bringing it back to the United States, and it's cheaper. It's all about economics. Is when it becomes cheaper to do it here, 
that it, it starts to happen here. This just happens to be a company that never sent it overseas in the first place. Exactly. And, and you know, it's funny that you say that it, it's cheaper. Um, I think one of the things, one of the byproducts of the recession is that people are less willing to part with their money for stuff that may break down. I mean, come on, let's face it. You get something from China, it breaks. It's it's junk. They just don't you, – you, there's no way that you can – design or manufacture quality into something at the volumes that uh, Chinese manufacturing is producing. It's just, come on, it's well, junk. I, you know, every, everything goes in cycles, and I think that's what we're seeing happen here too with, with companies like Draper, the smaller companies. And there's a lot of those. We see that at, at Ada when we go every, every six months. There's a lot of the smaller companies that are coming back in. When a recession happens in the cycle of, of life, when a recession occurs is when small companies, uh, a lot of them, thrive. Um, they have a chance during a recession to make a comeback because people tend to be more local at, at yeah. that time. And so there's a lot of small companies. We see that all the time. Uh, uh, there was the, the, the Fleece Works lady. You know, she's a yep. one-woman show out there just doing her thing. But she's, you know, coming on and had a very good year. Because of uh, because of the because of the economy and people tending to want things to last a little longer. Well, that's the key is yeah. wanting to last a little bit longer. It's like you do have to. You know, I have very little money, so what I do part with, it's got to be something that I'm not going to keep buying over and over again. Now, so I think people are turning to these smaller companies because they're making better quality products, and they're they're making investments in things. You know, I need a horse blanket that's not going to tear when my horse rolls. I need a horse blanket that's, or, you know, a saddle pad that I can wash every single day. You know, I'm an Olympic dressage rider in my dreams. I'm an Olympic dressage rider. I have this saddle pad. It's my favorite saddle pad. I need it to be washed every day. It can't break down in the wash. So I'm going to spend, you know, a hundred bucks for it or a little extra money. So I think value is becoming more important to Americans. I mean, it's been important to Americans for all along, but now we just can't we can't function without without it. We can't have junk anymore. Now, what I found interesting was that um, the Draper people it's it's been very difficult for them to break into the American equestrian market for a very glaring reason is that they're too small. Mm, right. So. Let's, you know, how do horse people function? Like, you know, brand name is a big deal. Like, you know, you put Ariat in front of me, I'll do business with you. You know, put uh, Steuben in front of me, I'll do business with you. I don't know the name Draper or I don't, you know, you're just a small manufacturing company. How can I rely on you? And so there you have that contradiction. You want the quality that a small company can deliver, but yet – there's a fear in investing in them and carrying their inventory. Well, and that's where, again, uh, other companies like Equestrian Collections, thank God we have those types of companies in the horse world that can offer us these products at, you know, at, at reasonable prices so, and make them fairly easy to get. See, uh, now we've always said that about Chris and Equestrian Collections is that she's sort of one step ahead of what's going on in the market right. in retail. She gets it. She gets this stuff. And in a way, you know, she's a real market leader because she's willing to take a chance on what's important. Right. And that's not just, I mean, that, that started with her, um, you know, her plus size line way back when. Right. She was doing it really to help a group that had no other options, had nothing. Right. Um, that, so. you know, she was really the one that, that led the way there. Um, by the way, that's all at EquestrianCollections.com, and you can find the Draper products there. This is not a paid commercial, by the way, for Draper. This is something that Helena wanted to do because, and to go see because it was uh, a, a company that makes their things in the United States. Um, yep, they're right, right in Massachusetts. They're, uh, it's about a two-hour drive for me. And, uh, you know, we talked about doing this for Smith Worthington and, yes. you know, really understanding what goes on behind the making of these products. No, I mean, it's just like <laughs> – Perky jerky. Yeah. We talked about that forever. When there's something that I find interesting and a company is willing to open their doors, welcome us in, and explain to us how something is made, um, let's take the chance and let's bring that information to our listeners. The fact that <laughs> I got some goodies in, in the form of a knee brace and it just so happened that my knee hasn't 
I haven't had any pain in it for the last 48 hours. Purely coincidental, but I'm going to keep tabs on that because uh, it's been giving me some trouble the last couple of weeks. Uh, well, let's uh, let's hope that your knee gets better. Keep the brace on, and thank you for making the road trip up there. And hello to Kat and everybody up there at Draper Therapies. And I also think it was, you know, I'm coming back to what I said earlier. I think it's neat that you got to go see a company that's doing what New England was really known for 100 years ago. Uh, I would love to see a resurgence of a cottage industry. Those mills, I mean, they're beautiful. Some of the ones that they have uh, restored are ju- they're huge they're city blocks but they're yeah. just beautiful the ones they have restored and and uh, unfortunately a lot of them were lost to fire uh fire yeah. took took a lot of them and uh but the little town where my family grew up in Connecticut Jut City Connecticut uh it was filled with mills and they were working up till t- 25 30 years ago those mills were was were still operating so we're all that neat very good Helena thank you so much for that oh my pleasure my pleasure and thanks again to Kat for taking me around and talking until the poor girl was blue in the face well i have uh we're gonna do sort of an informal uh attack and habit segment because you know to be honest uh, helene and i are it's getting close to the holidays and and uh we're 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 kind of getting holiday mode now so um but i do want to talk to you about a product that jennifer there's two things that jennifer talked about wanting and i want to talk to you about both fortunately she doesn't listen to this show so we're, we're okay uh, <laughs> um she's too busy doing her own shows but first, we want to talk about Kentucky Performance Products because they sponsor our Attack and Habit segment. It's, uh, you can choose Kentucky Performance Products supplements because the horse that matters to you matters to Kentucky Performance Products. Uh, this week, the, they wanted to speak to you about Elevate Maintenance Powder. This time of year, horses are consuming very little grass and may not be getting enough vitamin E. Horses in vigorous training, seniors, broodmares, and a stallion often requires additional levels of vitamin E to meet their needs. When you supplement with natural vitamin E, choose Elevate Maintenance Powder. Affordable, effective, and research-proven, Elevate Maintenance Powder's vitamin E is nature's most powerful antioxidant, protecting your horse on the cellular level. Elevate Maintenance Powder supports the strong immune system and healthy muscle function necessary for top performance. It's available and easy to feed, and you can learn more about it at kppusa.com. Dot com. That's kppusa.com. And on November or on January the 13th, we are going to be doing the morning show live from KPP's brand new office and warehouse in Versailles, Kentucky. So we're going to be heading out there to see their new digs. They've been spending they took six months to get transferred over there to get all the additional space they need to handle the business. So another small company that's a success story right here in Kentucky. And we're going to be doing the morning show live from there. Well, Jennifer, we, it's funny. I wanted to ask you about something here because you're my wife's best friend. And she sent me this this morning. I know she sent it to you, too, called the Tacky Rack. Have you ever seen the Tacky Rack? No, I know. I have a picture of it. It's hanging up on <laughs> She my... wants one of those for Christmas. And <laughs> what it is, so my tech and habit pick this week is the Tacky Rack. And what it is is you've seen those, um, those uh, nylon uh, – Grooming. She, grooming totes that hang on the wall and they have all the little compartments. They're usually black. And have all the it's little like a shoe com- caddy. Yeah, like a shoe caddy that you can put all your stuff in. It's they're kind of cool. But this one's different in that it has the the holes at the bottom for bottles and things like your hoof, uh, hoof oil and your fly spray and all of that. But across the top, whole top, top two-thirds of this, it has Velcro. Because one of the problems we have at the barn we're at now is there's no concrete aisles. So where you do your horse and everything, they just have the mats down. Well, if you're trying to wash uh, a pair of hawk boots or something like that, and you're trying to hose them, you're basically mm-hmm. chasing them around. They're, they're on the ground, and you're trying to hose them, and you're squirting them, and they're going all over the place, and it's just a, it's a, it's a mess. So what this does is there's Velcro across the top two-thirds of this big flat area of 600 and near polyester, and you just Velcro your boots on there and then hose them off. It's a cool idea. You can Anything do... you can do with a hose is my best friend. I know, and, and the, you, could, you could do polo wraps. Anything that has Velcro, you can Velcro up here and then clean them. It's just such a great idea. It just holds the whole thing. It's a, such a neat idea, and because it's, it's 600 denier uh, polyester, it's, it's weatherproof. It's going to last you a long time. You can hose the thing all you want, and it just makes it so easy. I know when you saw the picture, you probably went, oh, that would solve that problem. <laughs> so, 
um, because we don't clean our boots enough because it's such a pain. You just don't want to do it every time. And, and this Ugh. way, you would do it every time. It's just I'm still looking at my dirty boots <laughs> when I really need to clean those. See, your horses <laughs> would appreciate it too. So it's called a tacky rack. I'd, I'd never seen this one. Uh, you can go just Google tacky rack, and you're going to find it for sale many places. They run. They have different sizes, and they run from like twenty four to forty nine bucks. So they're the right price, and it, it uh, probably make a good gr- gift for that extremely practical horsewoman in your life, or uh, or horse person in your life. And my wife is, if anything, not, or, or if anything, she's practical. So uh, she wanted one of these for Christmas. That's the practical gift I'm going to get her. Now, the other thing, and I want to talk to you about this, and we were in a, get your opinion, we were in a music store. Uh, We had never been to the big music store here in town, and I stopped in to check out microphones and some of the cords they have for emergencies. I wanted to know what they had. And we're walking through, and she's always wanted a hammered dulcimer. And I don't know if you know what that is. It's a it's an old sort of instrument that uh, you sort of lay on your lap, and it has strings. And um, instead of uh, that, she, we were walking through, and I never got her one. And we were walking through, and she said, you know, she said, I heard that you shouldn't start with a hammered dulcimer because they're too hard to learn. You either start with a guitar or a banjo. She actually wants a banjo. Um, she wants a banjo for Christmas. Can I can believe? see Jen playing the banjo. Can, and her family is very musical. Her mom's very musical, and she knows how to read music. She would need lessons, but you can do that online now. You don't even have to take lessons from anybody anymore. It's, they make that. It would be easy. just fun trying to learn. You know, that's that's we're at that age where the the entertainment is in the learning. So you don't think she would? You think that she? You could really see her doing that? Yeah, I could. Okay. We have a ukulele. Oh, do you? Yeah, Peter bought a ukulele for quote unquote Grace. <laughs> And does he, play? he plays it all the time. Really? Yeah. Now he yes, had a guitar you know. too, didn't he? Did he? Have a um, no. Is he musical? Yeah. He saxophone. He plays the saxophone. Uh, so he knows how to read music and everything. He knows how to read music. Yes. Um, yes, we all do. We yeah. all know how to read music. We all play something. Well, we all. Me and Peter. <laughs> Grace isn't quite there yet. We're. That's coming soon. But uh, yeah, and the, you know what's kind of funny? He says just plunking the strings and trying to figure it out it's very therapeutic so i can definitely see jen jive in with her banjo all right i'm gonna make a soundproof room in a house first and then um <laughs> we'll give jennifer a banjo for christmas and we have to stop talking about this because she's just home from the barn and walking into the house so okay. uh, we'll stop talking about that all right got your opinion good i i uh, looks like i'll be banjo shopping yes. don't anybody okay. tell either Keep Where does one go to banjo shop, really? At the music store. <laughs> they had a bunch okay. of banjos there. And they have starter banjos, so you don't have to spend a fortune. Starter banjos. <laughs> you know, when, you're, go when, banjo. you, when you stink at it, it really doesn't matter if you have a great one. So, uh, Well, sometimes the great ones can make you stink a little less. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a famous quote. Yes, we're going to have to use that's that one from now on. That's a famous quote. <laughs> that's funny. That's a great one. Well, thank you, everybody, for listening. We really appreciate it. We appreciate you being here. We recorded our all host episode last night with with all eight hosts. Wow, what a crowded cra- what a crowded room that was last night. <laughs> and what fun we had. That's going to be coming up on the week between Christmas and New Year's. We have one more show for you that uh, Helena and I are going to record next week. And then we have the all host show the week after that, which you're going to thoroughly enjoy. So uh, tune in again next week. We have more fun stuff for you. I'm going to play the day out with this little video I found of two little girls, probably 10 years old, who I got to explain this video. They did their own version of 12 Days of Christmas. They made their own horsey version. And they must have had a thousand of those little plastic horses that you, you can buy. Mm-hmm. And the, like the little tiny briar types. And what they did is they made a little vignette for every one of the days of Christmas. And they, they, they made it each little vignette and they videotaped them singing the days of Christmas, showing you each one each time through the 12 days of Christmas. So when you hear them, <clears throat> the camera moving, that's them running to each vignette. And instead of putting all the vignettes in one room, they spread it out over the whole house. So by the time they were at 12 days of Christmas, they were running four rooms to get to 12. <laughs> And then going back, and you can hear them getting more out and out of breath as they go. By the time they're done with this song, they can hardly talk. 
<clears throat> so it was just the cutest thing ever. It only had 35 views on YouTube, so don't tell me how I found it. I have no idea. Uh, oh. But uh, we're going to post it on our Facebook page, too. But just take a listen. It's just, you're going to smile, and it's going to make your day. So have a great week, Helena. We'll see you next week. Enjoy the, all the holiday goings-on up there in Rhode Island. Thank you. Same to you. Ho, 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 ho. On the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me a very dirty barn. On the second day of Christmas, my true love gave to me two muddy boots and a very dirty barn. On the third day of Christmas, my true love gave to me Three dirty horses, two muddy boots, and a very dirty barn. On the fourth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me four perfect jumps, three dirty horses, two muddy boots, and a very dirty barn. On the fifth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me five silver. Four perfect jumps, three dirty horses, two muddy boots, and a very dirty barn. On the sixth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me six hungry horses, feed us five silver horseshoes. Four perfect jumps, three dirty horses, two muddy boots, and a very Dirty barn. On the seventh day of Christmas, my true love gave to me seven horses dropping, six hungry horses, feed us five silver horses, four perfect jumps, three dirty horses, two muddy boots, and a very dirty barn. On the eighth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me eight brand new foals, seven horses jumping, six hungry horses, feed us five silver horseshoes, four perfect jumps, three dirty horses, two muddy boots, and a very dirty barn. On the ninth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me Nine western saddles, I need more than that. Eight brand new foals, seven horses jumping, six feet hungry horses. Feed us five silver horseshoes, four perfect jumps, three dirty horses, two muddy boots, and a very dirty barn on a tent. Day of Christmas, my true love gave to me ten horses running, nine western saddles. I need more than that. Eight brand new foals, seven horses jumping, six hungry horses feed us. Five silver horseshoes, four perfect jumps, three dirty horses, two bloody boots, and a very dirty barn. On the eleventh day of Christmas, my true love gave to me eleven tangled lead ropes, ten horses running, nine western saddles. I need more than that. Eight brand new foals, ten horses jumping, six hungry horses feed us, five silver horseshoes. Four perfect jumps, three dirty horses, two muddy boots, and a very dirty barn. On the twelfth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me twelve dogs to clean, too many. Eleven tangled lead ropes, ten horses running, nine western saddles, I need more than that. Eight brand new foals, seven horses jumping, six hungry horses feed us, five silver horseshoes, four perfect jumps, three dirty horses, two muddy boots, and a very